Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. You're joining us here from the gloriously sunny Wales. We are here in the Brecon Beacons because UTMB training must carry on. It is closing in. We're heading up into the hills, up a very famous big hill here called Penny Fan. And yeah, can't wait to take you on the day. We've got about a marathon to run, just on a marathon with 2,000 meter climbing. It's gonna be an incredible experience. I'm here joined by my better half Sarah and a couple of other running friends Vicky and Gareth over here so yeah we're gonna head out into the hills lots to catch up on we'll see you out there getting it done right guys welcome to a very hot and sweaty Wales as local people know this is not normal it is a uh, well like the whole of the UK it's not renowned for great weather but today we are being spoiled rotten it is probably about 25 degrees now and it's only about half past nine in the morning so today we've got quite a few different peaks to climb but the main one being penny fan 886 meters second highest i think it's the second highest uh, peak in in wales with snowden being the highest definitely the highest one around here if you didn't know about wales they actually have their own language of welsh and about 20 percent of the population still speak welsh national sport here very much rugby union it's a, a religion for a lot of people just like away everyone will be playing that in school the welsh rugby union team one of the best in the world one of my favorite runners of all time maybe the best ever welsh runner steve jones former world record holder 208 marathon one of the absolute iconic runners of the 1980s what a legend and some other runners as well. Come on, Hurdler, Colin Jackson, Ewan Thomas, Tanny Gray Thompson, just a nation of some of the most friendly people you could ever come across. And yeah, beautiful scenes all around us. In terms of current runners, I suppose Dewey Griffiths and uh, maybe Jake Smith. Is Jake Smith Welsh? Is he English? Don't know. And of course, YouTube legends, Matt Reese and Harry Jones on the trails as well. Right. This is what I'm being faced with at the moment. Practicing using the poles, not because we really need them, but I want to be practicing with them for you to be, because you very much need them for those super long climbs out there. Right, I'm gonna wait for my friends to catch up and then we'll see you at the top. meters just pause the watch and yeah pretty spectacular views all around right no time to dilly dally around it didn't really didn't take long to climb and uh people have been going about penny fan with how hard it is and that really wasn't very hard at all but on today like today conditions are very very favorable but yeah that's the difficulty with not living in the mountains as such because compared to some of the climbing I did in Chamonix, that was incredibly easy. Um, but yeah, we're just getting done what we can and we'll be back in Chamonix in those mountains again very, very soon. This is what I'm faced with out in front of me. Just how stunning is that? Right guys, let's get down this hill. Watch out Sarah. Just as I say, it's very easy out here. And now we're getting some good old technical stuff. I should whoa, keep my mouth shut. I take back what I said, that's the uh, Brecon Beacon gods looking down on me for saying this was easy. It is not easy, I'm absolutely dripping. But hiking, up we go. Now if you don't have poles, I really recommend doing a hands on knees type approach, which is what I'm doing now. Sometimes for the shorter climbs, this is all, all you need. Obviously, you'd have both hands on knees. It really just helps use some of your upper body strength to get up climbs as well. Now we've been here for like three days. I've done 
about 52k up to this morning, Thursday morning. The total elevation so far, two meters. It's been running up and down this canal, which has been pancake flat. But with all training, it's good to mix your favorite thing, what you enjoy to do, with things that challenge you, like this, makes you stronger. This is not my natural environment, but it's a great challenge, great experience. Gareth is much stronger than I am. Beat me to the top. We've got a bit of flat now, Gareth? Yeah, a bit of down. Just down here, along this ridge. We're coming up for about 10k in to the run. It's taken a long time, as it will do in the race, so replicating race conditions. So much of this about time on feet, hiking around, which is what UTMB will be. Spend a lot of time at race pace. Whether you're, you're marathon training, half marathon training, 5k training, just spending time at race pace in similar conditions. It's great to catch up with some of our friends who haven't seen for so long. Like, it's amazing, I'm sure you guys are all the same back out seeing people for the first time and you all there was that one thing that still comes up what was it like for you through everything we've been through and you just want to put your arms around people give people those hugs we couldn't before it's amazing it's still affecting everybody those mental health issues which I'll still talk as much as I can about things are quite good at the moment it goes up and down but we're all through a good phase thank you as always for those kind messages and support and always feel free to reach out if you're having a bad day or something and uh, have a chat and I've always got time for everyone in the running community and the community is a wider hole but yeah I hope you guys are all right and getting out and exploring and seeing some new things and if you're not believe me I was in some really dark places at a time it can get better and it will get better reach out and talk to people and come and spend time out in the nature out in the countryside so it's a world of good. We just stumbled across this uh, crash site here of this World War II aircraft, which uh, came down, a Canadian aircraft, came down and hit the uh, hill just here and crashed. Uh, unfortunately, five Canadian crew all uh, perished in the accident. You still see a bit of the landing gear here and uh, bits of what remains of the aircraft. And there's a, another little pile up there and then a couple of engine still down in the down the valley there part of 1942 world war ii just uh yeah taking a moment to ponder people that lost their life it's a beautiful little memorial up here with all the all the poppies it's kind of like We're about 18k now, just stumbled across some nice loos here, so I'm going to use the loo quickly. Hello! And uh, most importantly, refill. Give me some water, please. This is going to take a while. Right, let's get some uh, cold water down. It tastes quite nice. Let's have a quick chat about food for the day. We didn't really bring much with us to Wales, running a bit low, but just got some of these uh, deliciously Ella bars, very overpriced, and uh, some Gray's bars, and good old hula hoop. And uh, that's all we bought, no uh, like sports nutrition with us today, just got loads of that stuff. Um, yeah, trying out lots of different options ahead of UTMB, because there's some stuff you can just get, put in drop bags. Right, need to sit and wait for these guys, slow coaches, can't keep up part-timers. Sarah's got a bit of a problem with our poles here, they're stuck in, so 
2,200 metres is quite a lot with no power wood. It's not a grip on a car It's just weird that they're both, they're both like that. Black diamond pole just will not. Yeah. Stinky Sarah sweat. Thank you. Don't want to have this happen on UTMB day. No. Right guys, Ben from the future here. We did eventually get these undone. With We had to clamp some like mole grips on them to try and loose them, loosen them. So Sarah had to do the whole run without these. Uh, but yeah, they're unfortunately just in here underneath there. It's just full of salt off Sarah's sweat. And there's the catch has gone all super rusty as well, if you can see on there. So these are now going to be never put down again. No, not you. We're not going to put you down. <laughs> um, not going to... Yeah, put these down again, because just say locked in, but that is useless for traveling, taking on planes and all the stuff like that. We just had to go and get some new distance carbon Z poles, which are incredibly hard to find. But Sarah, are you sad to see these go? These have been yeah. with you through so many, thick and thin. so many things. Yeah. But there you go. And keep them for the memories. I'll right. Put them in the bin. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the video. Luckily, Gareth's got a water filter, so just filling up from this quite free flowing stream. Sarah's just topping up a third bottle there. And our survey says. Oh, 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. Right, guys, we're about 25k in. So much hiking to do today to get this sort of elevation in. I don't know if it picks it up on the camera, but birds tweeting all around us. It's just beautiful. No wind, so calm, very hot. I don't know, I can't see another human being anywhere around. But I just want to say a quick thank you to all, for everybody with all the shoe suggestions in the last video and just, yeah, ideas for bits of kit and things to give a go and get in for the channel. So we've got some Hoka Speedgoat 5s in, doing a few runs in those at the moment. Obviously guys, I can't get too much. We do buy and review all the gear ourselves. I'd love to uh, be able to afford more things, but yeah, really appreciate all those suggestions coming in. Got this new pack in as well. Uh, bought this on, just on the Salon website, the latest ADV12, because this is gonna be the pack for UTMB. Yeah, maybe, I don't know if it's quite big enough for the amount of nutrition we wanna take round the Mont Blanc. So yeah, we'll see, but super comfortable. 12 litres of space. Just really loving the amount of pockets up front at the back if we get to everything. And then with my poles, a few people have asked, I just keep my naked band on and just put the poles behind me, just in the back there. And then I just use the naked band for cameras and phones and that sort of thing for filming these videos. We're now, this is what I'm looking at up ahead and we've got to climb up there. Serious amounts of climbing today, this hill is just incredibly difficult and it's just made me thinking what's harder when you have to do like 10 by a k marathon training at like full-on pace got to dig deep or is it out getting up things like this let me know what in the comments what do you think is harder i mean it's certainly a lot more picturesque here than on the flat test path but what do you think where would you rather train let me know because this is very tough. There's that plane, that is amazing. 
this uh, RAF are doing some low passes. I don't know if you, that picks up on my phone. Look at that. That is amazing. Where that plane is flying into uh, the thunderclouds over there. So we're going to get off the mountain. So we're going to go back up over Penny Fan and then drop back down to the car. So it's going to be a slightly shorter route, but you can't mess around out here. How are you getting on, Sarah? Yeah, good. Did you enjoy that climb? Yeah. Honest answer. No, I did. I love prefer the canal, I think. Yeah. Zero <laughs> meters. Oh, thanks. Let's get across this little stream, hopefully without getting my foot wet. Ah, there we go. You had a good day, Sarah? Oh, it's been so good. How do you think it's going to be good for UTMB training, this type of thing? Yes, I, I do. Perfect. And Vicky? Vicky your partner Bob. in crime? Yeah, it's been great. Going day, strong. Yeah. And Gareth, the other p guy you've seen in today, training for a race called Dragon's Back, which is maybe one of the most extreme races in the world. 260 miles. It's a stage race, you stop every day, but one of the very hardest multi-stage races anywhere in the world. So great to catch up with Gareth. And when we first knew Gareth in London, he just did the occasional 10k and a half marathon. So uh, moved back to his home country of Wales and now uh, undertaking an incredible thing. Just shows you never really know you're calling. Right, let's get this last little climb done. How many meters are we on, Sarah? 1692. 1692 meters so far. Not going to quite make that 2k, but let's enjoy this one last climb. Oh, how's that ice cold in there? What have you got? Ice <laughs> Living the dream. You're not very Welsh, are you? Hummus in the back of your car. But what a little trail runner set up. Nice company for a change. Right guys, we managed to escape the rain. There's Penny Fern just up here. And now we're just heading to Hills Burgers, this quite trendy little uh, burger restaurant. Gonna fuel up. And yeah, then we can have a chat about all the stats for the day. But for now, I just need to get some good food in. These are vegan burgers. I know they don't look it, but they really are. <laughs> that tastes awesome. Come and check it out. Where are we hill? Yeah. This burger. I'm sure all the locals know this place. Sarah's just paying up, and yeah, the final stats for the day. Every, as, you, as always, everything's always on Strava. Um, so it's 31.8k, just a smidge under 20 miles, uh, 1825 meters in the bank. If you want to check out Strava, all there and all the pictures and all our daily stuff is on there. So that's it, guys. Thank you so much for following along. We are heading back to London tomorrow. Our house purchase is very nearly done. Just cannot wait to get back uh, to normal life, quite frankly. So that's it, guys. Thank you so much for all the support. Everybody getting uh, hats. This is one of the new elite hats um, on the website and yeah, all that sort of stuff. I'm absolutely knackered. Thank you to the patrons, the YouTube legends supporting us here on the channel. Check out the plans. And me and Sarah will see you very soon. Lots of love, guys. We'll see you in the next one.